I'm the creator of an adventure game that is called uh, Give Us a Cthulhu Adventure and which we recently successfully kickstarted. Uh, now I realize that that phrase probably sounded like a lot of incomprehensible blah 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 to everyone. So maybe if we could move that up a little bit. So uh, let me go a little bit into detail. I am the I'm the creative director of an independent video game studio that myself, Kami, and Niku have, uh, have created as a startup within the company that we work for here in Turgumures. I'm an uh, artist and animator, so is Kami, and Niku is a programmer. <clears throat> so we've always had this passion for video games, and we thought, uh, what better way to put all of our skills to use together than to make a video game? And uh, that game is called Gibbous, a Cthulhu Adventure. And our studio is called Stuck in Attic because we're working out of an attic and we're stuck in it for extensive periods of time. Voluntarily, of course. So, so, next slide, please. So what is a point-and-click adventure? Uh, it's a game in which you go adventuring by pointing and clicking with your mouse. Makes sense, right? So it's not one of those games where you constantly have to look over your shoulder in case someone's coming to get you and you have, don't have to shoot anybody. You just walk around and uh, explore the, the scenery and uh, solve some puzzles and talk to some, uh, to some interesting uh, characters along the way. Now making an independent video game is one of the most beautiful and rewarding and stressful and time consuming and expensive things that you could do with your time. But we never really were very responsible adults, so we figured we'd make one anyway. <clears throat> so why is it so difficult to make such a game? Well, you can think of Gibbous as an interactive cartoon. So everything that you would need in order to make a full-length animated feature, you would need for this game too. So that means like an extensive script and dialogue, lots and lots of animations, background art, music, sound effects, voices, etc. Plus the added <clears throat> element of interaction and programming. And we are making all of this by ourselves, three people. Uh, with the exception of uh, voice acting, which will be done by professional actors, and the translation into languages other than uh, English. Now this is good news for me because I've always been interesting in, interested in um, <clears throat> expanding my creativity into different domains. So I've always enjoyed uh, creative writing and drawing, animating, and so on. But the problem is, when you're making such, when you're, when you're Creating such a project, such a complex project in three people, and you want to do it in around a year or so, that means that you're probably going to be spending a lot of late nights at the office, and probably weekends too. And contrary to popular belief, artists need to eat and pay the bills just like everybody else. So, um, thankfully, we've had a lot of help in the beginning of our journey because our boss really believed in our project, and so he let us generously use the, the resources of the company like uh, hardware and software and time and space, time and space to, uh, to make a vertical slice demo of the game. So a vertical slice of demo is a small portion of the game which you build and you hold it up to the standards of the final product. And this is helpful because first of all, once you've made it, you've proven that you can actually make that game. And also, um, it helps us better estimate how long it will take to make the game and what the, the pitfalls and the, the obstacles we might meet along the way are. Now, uh, this, uh, this demo represents somewhere less than 10% of the final game. So we still needed to find a way to fund the remaining 90% of the game. And to me, it was pretty obvious from the beginning that the way to do that would be to crowdfund it via Kickstarter. So, uh, I'm curious how many of you today here know what crowdfunding is all about, by show of hands. Okay, well, I'll explain it anyway. <clears throat> so, you can think of crowdfunding as a means for your public to fund your project upfront. So, in our case, people would pay for the, for the entirety of the game uh, before it was actually made, so that we could afford making it for them. And I, I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but it's the good kind of crazy. And Kickstarter is the biggest, most visible, and most important platform out, crowdfunding platform out there. And we knew that we wanted to go to Kickstarter because our game was very ambitious, and so we needed all the chances that we could get. Um, I'm going to tell you the basics of Kickstarter from a creator's perspective. So first of all, you need to set your funding goal. 
And that's the money that you're going to be asking for. Uh, in our case, that was $40,000, which represented the, abs the absolute bare minimum that we, could need, that we would need for the three of us to work on the game full time for a year. Then you need to set your funding period. That's a standard of uh, 30 days, so that's what we went for. So we had 30 days to make this game happen. So we had 30 days to raise $40,000. Do that and you get your game funded and you've also proven that there's an interest, that there's a, there's a market and the crowd that wants it. And you've also probably uh, gathered something of a following along the way. And raise one dollar less than that and you get absolutely nothing because Kickstarter is an all or nothing sort of deal. So you could probably see that this would be a very way, good way to motivate us into raising that $40,000, at least $40,000 within the 30 days. Um, now, I've been interested in Kickstarter since around 2012. I only became a member and a backer in 2013, and we started making the game in late 2014. And crowdfunding is sort of a controversial place to take your video game uh, project because <clears throat> there have been people who have been funded and abused the privilege. Some people haven't uh, delivered on all of their promises. Some projects haven't been yet delivered. And crowdfunding is all about trust. Why should people entrust you with their money? Now, there's ways around that. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a veteran game designer or a very well-known studio, then you don't have that problem because people already know what you've done and you're good. If not, it's best if you have something of a following, you know, if you have a crowd around you because that's what crowdfunding is all about, ultimately. Well, we didn't have any of that. So um, our so-called strategy, because it wasn't really a strategy, was just to be very upfront and honest about the fact that yes, we're making a very complex game and uh, it's going to be quite difficult, but we're very passionate about it and look, we've made this little demo and we can actually make this. <clears throat> and it was a shot in the dark, but I'm very glad that we took it because as a great philosopher once said, do or do not, there is no try. So. Um, I don't want to turn this into some kind of crowdfunding tutorial because that's not, that's not the idea of this talk and it's not my place to do it. I just want to tell you the cool things about kickstarting uh, that we experienced. So we launched the campaign on April 5th this year to a very limited uh, media exposure. We had some articles written about us on niche gaming sites, adventure gaming sites, some horror websites, and we had a modest following on social media. And I can't say that we weren't nervous when we did it, because we were a little bit nervous. But we were very, we breathed a huge sigh of relief, of relief when we saw that we were 20% funded within the first 48 hours. And I'm saying that we were a bit nervous because the odds were a little bit stacked against us. So we were three nobodies from the middle of nowhere, of nowhere and we were asking for $40,000. And it's kind of difficult to do that when some of the people that you're asking the money from aren't quite yet convinced that the place that you're from, Transylvania, actually exists. So that was a little bit of a problem there. And also there's the fact that these games are pretty niche. So there's not, they're, they're not exactly setting the world on fire. They're not trending or anything like that. Um, but this is another cool thing about crowdfunding. It can not only, it can not only keep alive a genre, but it, it can actually breathe some new life into it and resuscitate it. Because, for example, back in 2012, people had been saying for years and years that adventure games were dead. But then this guy, his name is Tim Schafer, he's a personal role model of mine. Um, he's a game design legend and an adventure games pioneer. Uh, he said, no, adventure games are not dead. So back in 2012, he asked for $300,000 on Kickstarter in order to make an adventure game, and he got in excess of $3 million. And Tim is a personal hero of mine, and not because of the money, but because he proved that even if you have a product that's very niche, you can, you, if you go, if, if, if your market is global, <coughs> market sounds so, if, if everybody from around the world who is interested in that project and sees uh, that the project is cool chips in, then you can actually do it. So his campaign was a huge inspiration for us because not only do, are we, were we making the same kinds of games, uh, not only was his campaign an inspiration for our campaign, it was an inspiration to make the game itself. So, fear is the path to the dark side. And that has nothing to do with the presentation, but it's such a cool quote, I thought I'd just put it out there. 
Now, actually, it does have to do with the presentation because um, what we wanted to do was consciously avoid feeling fear because if we stopped and thought about our chances, then that would have been counter, maybe counterproductive. So we went into this campaign not even taking into consideration not getting funded. And I know that sounds bad, but let me explain. Like, it wasn't the fact that we were full of ourselves, because we really weren't, and it wasn't the fact that we were completely delusional, because we were only partly delusional. Uh, it was the fact that we were convinced that if you, if you put all your energy and your passion into a project, then there's no way that people that are passionate about the same thing aren't going to feel it themselves and react accordingly. So people could tell that <clears throat> our game was not about uh, the money and it wasn't about the exposure. It really was just about people from all over the world gathering together because they have a certain passion for something. So we asked for $40,000 and we managed to raise $56,000. And as the creator of the game and the campaign, I thought for sure that that was going to be like the highlight of the campaign. Nothing better than that, right? But actually, it wasn't. And that took me by surprise too. So let me tell you what the highlights of the campaign were for us. So almost 2,000 backers from all over the world supported us. And this was much more important to us than the money that was being raised. And uh, this was because for over, no, for about a year on and off, we had been stuck in our little attic just working away on the game. And we had received little to no feedback. And it was so great when we launched the demo with the campaign that people really reacted to it and really enjoyed it. So this was great. And these were people that were so passionate about the game. They were as passionate about the game as we were. And I really felt, it really, really felt like we were making a heck of a lot of friends uh, in a very short period of time. And I know for sure that I'm gonna be meeting some of those friends in real life, but even for even those people that I'm probably not, never gonna meet, uh, we, were, we were very, very, grateful and happy that that happened. Another beautiful surprise was the fact that we got, we not only got a lot of local support, which we, which we were hoping for, so a lot of our friends and family and co-workers were nice enough to support us, but uh, we hadn't really counted on, on uh, national support. And as you can see, uh, these are the, the top cities where backers come from, and Bucharest is on number one, Cluj Napoca is on number three, and there's some London and Berlin places. Um, so that was something that we were, was a very beautiful surprise and we didn't really expect it and we're grateful for that. But the absolute highlight of the campaign, and I really never thought this would have been it, were the live streams that we had been doing for the backers. So basically, I started out very awkwardly and timidly live streaming some animation just to show people what it takes for us to make the game. Um, and as we did more and more, and we started to do them all, in, all three of us, we realized that there was like a really good connection between us and the backers and really felt like building a community together because we were there in real time with them. And we, we kept doing this and we plan to keep them, to keep doing them um, from now on too. And the absolute best moment of the campaign was when we, we were in the final hours and we made a seven and a half hour long, seven and a half hour, right? Marathon that we streamed together. And in the final moment when the clock struck and we had made our money and we were celebrating together, it really felt like all these people in the chat room were, even though they weren't physically there with us, we really felt that they were just as happy as we were. And it was their victory just as much as ours if not more. And I've been online for many, many years, and I'm sure everyone here has too. Um, but I caught myself like thinking to myself, like an old person, like how amazing is this technology and this high-speed internet that I can, the people that I'm making the game for can actually watch me making it for them. So that's, uh, that, was a, that was a great thing, uh, great revelation on our part. And again, this was probably the most beautiful moment of the whole campaign. And uh, here we go. Always pass on what you have learned. That's my favorite philosopher there. So um, I think you can't really crowdfund without being passionate about it. Because you can throw your project up on Kickstarter and not care about it or not know what crowdfunding is all about. And it's not going to work out. 
I think you need to be a backer before you are a creator. And it's really not about the money. Because think about it, why would people give you money in advance to create something that isn't there and you're probably going to deliver it like one or two years from now? And I believe, and I know it's going to sound corny, but I believe that this is because there is a beautiful human trait that we have in that we find satisfaction in helping other people uh, go on the way, go down the route that they are destined for. And we find satisfaction in helping people um, realize their dreams. And if you're crowdfunding, you're probably a maker of dreams coming true. And I know it sounds really corny, but if you search your feelings, then you know it to be true. So uh, I guess the point of the campaign, of the talk, and of the campaign was that it doesn't really matter where you're from in this world, as long as you have a cool project that you're uh, interested in and invested in and passionate about, and as long as you have people who are passionate about your project too and they're supporting you and rooting for you, and as long as you have a good connection with your audience, and as long as you have a good internet connection. So thank you very much and may the force be with you.